Well, ultrasound was started by Carl Dusick in the 1930s and 40s, and he was trying to um, diagnose intracranial tumors. There's a lot of artifact in that, uh, at that time. Things have progressed uh, extensively over the last several decades. And so ultrasound is now being used to help locate peripheral nerves and to help coordinate injections and to even show some improved potential outcomes and safety when it comes to uh, trying to help patients with chronic pain. What's nice about ultrasound is that it uh, can show the surrounding tissue and it can also show vasculature as well as uh, the actual nerves themselves. Unfortunately, with the use of fluoroscopy, although CT and fluoroscopy are considered the gold standards, and fluoroscopy is typically used in outpatient-based procedures, but um, fluoroscopy is typically uh, really only um, good at showing bone and bony structures and not necessarily um, the actual targets that you're looking for. And so we use fluoroscopy uh, as a surrogate where we think we know where that nerve should be based on anatomical dissections and what we know of the anatomy. But um, everyone's a little different, and ultrasound can actually show that. And you can use ultrasound um, pretty well with uh, a lot of a variety of different types of injections and therapies for patients with chronic pain. Well, just because you can do ultrasound doesn't mean you should. And there are certain types of injections that uh, the evidence is lacking. So for the typical epidural steroid injection, you can't really see the spread of your local anesthetic or the spread of solution. And so it's, um, it's not been very well uh, uh, considered to be uh, used in these types of situations. Um, there are other situations where um, it, it can be very useful, especially in the neck type region. So things like cervical medial branch blocks, um, or uh, third occipital nerves or greater occipital nerves. There's been very good evidence, especially because the anatomy is favorable. It's uh, more of a superficial injection. Also, um, in terms of sympathetic blocks, the stellate ganglion has been uh, very well studied in ultrasound, and you can avoid hitting vasculature, which you would normally have to do if you go through the classical approach using fluoroscopy. You typically have to go through the thyroid tissue, which is pretty vascular vascularized and um, you can avoid that using ultrasound guided techniques. There are a lot of providers out there that um, based on anatomy and based on where the patient is complaining their pain, they'll go ahead and just stick a needle in that area and inject it with some numbing medicine steroid and see if it makes things better. I'd like to advocate against doing that because you can't really always get um, standardized results this way. You're not really sure if you're getting the nerve or not. And um, it's very useful if you have ultrasound to help guide you um, because you can then determine if you really did get that nerve or the presumed nerve or if there's anything else going on around that tissue, whether um, there's a compression or whether there's a mass of any uh, sort there. And so ultrasound can be useful in that regard. And I would, I would hope that more and more people who are doing sort of office-based outpatient injections that might be peripheral of some sort and that would normally be done blindly would hopefully in the future be done with ultrasound because that can help those of us who might have to see these patients afterward to determine if we should continue that or if we should rethink our differential diagnosis.